Turbo Trucker here. Hopefully you can see me alright with the light coming down on me. <laughs> yeah, I parked up tonight up at uh, the place we always collect from, or primary collection point as I'll call it. Not going to name where it is and all that for obvious reasons. But I want to talk, I know today's been all about videos about talking about certain subjects like earlier on I've done a video of the driver shortage which was a drive through video hopefully that comes out and I'm, if you haven't seen it it's not you're not being able to hear the audio so I'm going to have to probably redo it so hold out for that one if you haven't if that's not been released it'll be named like driver shortage or wordings of that effect this one is more about road rage you know, in so-called similar situations, which uh, I've had what, another one today. As a driver, you will encounter road rage situations of varying types. On you know, people who actually physically stop you and abuse you, and yeah, uh, you know, one end extreme to people who just passing and randomly swearing at you, which was one today and I was driving down the road I'll explain fully what's happened. I was driving down the country road, it's I know a very wide road so you can cruise down the road. It's approaching a village I was going below thirty at this time because I know it's a tight village. So I was driving me relatively cautious because I be I go down there quite a lot so I'm fairly familiar that you know I need to be a bit cautious there because I know about three or four hundred metres down the road around the bend there's some parked cars. And you can get through easy enough. Just you've got obviously naturally, since I'm aware of that, I need to approach the situation cautiously, just in case there's somebody else moving by. But never mind. That that's not really part of. Really, it's just to describe. But I was doing. I was below the speed limit. Well, below the speed limit. So it wasn't that. There was. I was on my side of the road. You know, just doing my own thing, listening to my music. All good. And on the opposite side, coming obviously towards me, was a white van. A Citroen white van. I think the Citroen, the double arrow things. I've got it on my uh, dash cam, so hopefully I'll remember. I'll try and save it onto my phone anyway. And I'll try maybe to add this, add it into this so you can actually see what happened. And obviously blanking out a little bit of the bits, possibly. We'll see. Yeah, and uh, coming up, I don't only noticed them because I was wondering why was the driver doing this in the cab. That's what gained my attention. I realised he was staring at me, so he's like this, you know, with all his fingers up like this, you know, giving signals of a certain swear word capability. I mean, you knew he meant what he meant. I'm sorry if it may seem like I swore there, no, I wasn't swearing. It's me sort of semi reacting but blatantly, with the, do you know that look of pure hatred? Absolute pure hatred. You know, that you can have, that, that you see. I mean, it's not like it was a bit of a laugh. There was that look in the driver's face, and didn't quite catch the passenger. The passenger was also giving me hand signals as well. And it was just the pure look of hatred, like as if I'd done something wrong, or offended them something, or done something to them, or who knows, maybe it's something that's happened in the past. And it just left me a bit, like, puzzled. So I was like, there's no one else they could have been swearing to, you know, it was, it was a car, but he was quite far back, and he was blatantly looking at me, doing it, you know, blatantly angling it all up towards me. Maybe they have something against truckers. Maybe they got cut up during the day somewhere by another truck, myself or whoever. You know, maybe something happened, you know, or maybe they perceived something different than what I saw. Who knows? I kept relatively calm. I did swear to myself, you know, but I didn't swear back to them. I didn't. Acknowledge them really. I sort of just gave them the look of what? <laughs> what? <laughs> really? <laughs> Confusion, more like. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh well. And the other thing happened lately. This is like quite a few weeks ago now, to be honest. It's actually down this way where I'm at now, up down all the way as we go down. Is some single track sections. Trucks go up and down there all day long anyway, but it goes to like small little narrow sections, or maybe 100, 200 metres or so. There's one that bends around that you can't quite see the end of. And uh, I committed down, because it was all clear and I committed down to it. And once you committed, you committed. And I had low traffic behind me, so I was committed as soon as I committed in. Got about a quarter of the way down, if not a little bit further. And this white Nissan it's coming down the other way. Suddenly came around the corner, flying around the corner. Not quite slammed on dramatically, but it was just like... You could tell he was like, whoa. <laughs> Obviously no space, really. You can barely fit a Nissan beside me. And I'm my window halfway down because it's a bit warm. And he still approached. So I, well, at this point I pretty much had stopped. Because I was like, what the hell? I'm oh, sorry for swearing. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, what the? And, you know, he kept coming. I was like, oh, sort of fully up against the side, of the, you know, except for maybe one inch away. You know, with intolerance of me being able to move about, you know, without touching the wall beside me, he wouldn't have any more room. And I couldn't reverse because I had a whole load of traffic right behind me, who quite naturally, as they do, follow you down. Not saying they're in the wall, that's what they've done. And this guy proceeded to try and squeeze his. It's basically a big Nissan sports car of some, I've forgotten what they're called. Might be the Rally variant that's quite wide. It's quite a wide car. It's like a saloon sports car. It's a Poya Rally car. Quite wide. Oh, it's a very wide car, to be honest. And he couldn't get past my cab at all. There was not a chance. I sort of said to him, there's not a chance you can get past me. Not without me crushing it. Because he had his window open, he sort of swore up towards me, then said, truckers should not be coming down here, how dare you? I did answer him back, I said, look, my customer's only down the road, and this is the primary way for us to get to the customer. And I'll go down this route every single day. You know, it, eventually, after a lot of hoo-ha, I think once I've sort of highlighted to him, look, you know, if you, because we were there for over five minutes... At the point that he came down, there was nothing behind him at all. By the time it was all over, there was be like X amount of cars behind him, and they held off because they saw what was going on. And You know, the cars behind me started eventually, because the cars furthermost did start to realise, and it was chaos. This is how long it took it started to reverse. It almost got to the stage that I had nearly had to start thinking about reversing myself. But luckily, I'd say, I don't know if common sense or scared him of saying, I, I need to point maybe a phone at the police if you carry this on. So I said, look, I don't want to argue with you. You know, you shouldn't have come down. I'm fully committed. And even if you didn't see me when you first committed down, you're the smaller vehicle. You're the more manoeuvrable vehicle, you know. All you need to do is move, I think it was about 10, 15 metres back. And it would have been all resolved. No issues, got past him, thank you very much. No issue. Yeah. Took a little while for him to suss it out. And that was technically road rage going on there. I know, yes, I probably shouldn't have answered him back and add fuel to the fire. But I'm not having somebody saying, oh, shoot me down here, then trying to force his car down beside me. And I was stopped because I knew what's going on there. If he was going to cause any damage... I'll let him do it to his own car. You know, it's off my shoulder then. And you, you see other things as truckers, lots of other situations. You know, it's not worth getting too out. It winds you up naturally because, you know, like myself, I like to treat my job fairly seriously. I'll take what my actions are very seriously. I assess myself going, look, could I have done something to prevent that within reasonable recourse? You know, did I do everything right? And, you know, I always look back a bit like they, the car situation trying to get past me, or the van situation with them saying, going, look, what have I done? I even rewatch my dash cam footage to get a rough idea what, what went on. 
to make sure what I saw what was, and you could vaguely make him out swear, swearing for the window on the dash cam. I mean, they were probably just having a laugh. They're probably just going, hee hee, it's another trucker, let's wind him up. You know, it could have been something like that, but with a pure look of anger in the face. Must be a reason, surely. Who knows? It's not worth getting stressed about, but it's a very amusing situation that I wouldn't mind to stand up onto the channel. I so I might show the footage if I remember to get it off the dash cam. If I don't, sorry. I do apologise. And I'll try and add it into the video. Either during while I was talking about it or after the video, if you know what I mean. So yeah, so I'm parked up now, obviously. Cards out. Got off, hence I've got pen enough to do my paperwork. I like to fiddle around with my pen. And, you know, you run into situations like that that baffle you. That really do baffle you. You know, it, it ranges from the van situation that just leaves you speechless to situations that you're one on one wording with a person or in communication. And I've seen it on other vloggers stuff that, you know, you see them at junctions, people getting out of the cars and all sorts and, you know, it's not worthwhile getting away weight and causing a worse situation or delaying, you know, I know he's probably out for his Sunday afternoon drive, you know, and he didn't expect to meet a truck down there and it's ruined his day, you know, but the fact is, it's a public highway public road. It's, you know, for everybody. It's for commercial traffic and private traffic. You know, everybody has a right to be down there. There was no restrictions. There's no weight restrictions, nothing. Nothing saying heavy goods can't go down there. And it's the way I've been taught to come down to this place. So, who knows? It's a mad old world we live in. And road rage is a real thing. It I think it's getting worse, personally, road rage as a whole. I mean, every so often I'll have an incident, a bit like today and what happened a few weeks ago. You can go through periods, and it can be in certain areas as well. You know, you can get it a lot in London, I found. I know, yes, it's stereotyped, but London is more the hotspots. But, but also I've had it in places you don't expect it, where you least expect it to happen, you know. It, every time it does baffle me to a degree, you know, extent of, you know, and most of the time it's over petty stuff. Or somebody's either misread or not appreciated the size of the wagon or, you know, that they're not the only ones on the road, you know. You know, whatever the reasons are, what happens, it shouldn't happen, you know. People should learn to take a step back and go, actually, let's be the big man here. And if there is something to report, report it the proper way. Phone up the person's company, you know. As long as you've got proof, you know, and you're, you know you're on the right. You know, so you've got dash cam footage so showing a truck coming straight at you. You know, deliberately. Or, you know, deliberately cutting you up, you know. Or vice versa, you know, do it the right way, you know. Or if you need to communicate, wait till a safe situation, like in a lay-by, or suitable parking place. I know, yes, you people don't have the time to go and I'll follow him back. No. But at the same time, if you want to have a chat, you can do it, just do it civil. Don't hold everybody else up, don't cause an incident, don't cause a song and dance. And yeah, road rage is said is a massive spectrum from silly little things, you know, or questionable things, to people, you know, full on going physical, you know, with people, you know, coming out wanting a fight. And luckily, I haven't had a situation that I've had somebody come out and physically want to harm me. As far as I'm aware, you know, but I. Most situations, I follow a simple safety protocol. Don't leave the cap. 
This is my safe space. Keep the cab locked. If you need to chat with them, and they've got out, for example, you feel safe, reasonably safe enough, lower the window down so you can read the situation. Ideally, don't leave the cab. Don't get out. Especially if you're in the active road and, you know, if they stopped in front of you, got out of their car, approached your cab, let them shout up at you. You know, it's not worth the risk to get out of your cab. Because then, anything could happen. It could just end up being a verbal fight. And plus, also, it's unprofessional if you get out in the middle of the road, then also you're adding to it. You know, at best, if you've got a dash cam, save what's happened, you know, and take it... You know, if the person persists, he doesn't want to drive off, you know, politely ask him to get back in his car, or meet you at the next lay-by. Or please contact my company, and I will stop shortly and report this to my company as well. If you have a dash cam, tell them, look, I've got a dash cam, mate. You know, it might dissolve the situation a bit. It might switch from going, oh, I'd better go, because he's got me on dash cam stopping. This is on the extreme side, this extreme side. And, and this brings out the security and safety belief of, if you are a commercial driver, you've got to be, these days, pretty serious about your safety. And it falls back down onto safety at the end of the day, because where road rage happens, there's always potential violence. And it has happened, you know, that drivers have been beaten up, all sorts. You know, and it's simple safety, it falls on other factors, you know, so you know, lay by at night, you know, who's around there, so lock the doors, keep your windows shut. Also, leave a breathing hole, but, you know, safety is always, a, for safety and well-being of you and others, you know, number one first and others, you know, is the keen fact, you know. I can't tell you how to deal with certain situations precisely, because I do not know how, how fully they will play out. I have a set safety principle, I always stay in the cab as best as possible, keeping the door locked. I mean, the only times I ever get out is if I'm in a safe place to do so. I feel safe to get out. I know there's no one going to stab me in the back or mug me or whatever. Could happen. I know it's not going to go that way, if you know what I mean. If the other person's relatively calm and just wants to have a chat, fine. It's your call. A lot of it's down to personal preference and reading the situation. But I said, number one, safety always. Keep the even when you're driving, keep the cab locked because you never know these days driving through cities. You know, if somebody quickly runs up beside your wagon, wants to open up and gives you one, and who knows? Or tries to rob the truck, or who knows? It's not worth the risk. But nevertheless, get back on the subject. You know, road rage is, a, as I said, a very real thing out on the roads. As a, a professional driver, you will witness. Either to yourself or to others. So I've seen it happen to others quite a lot as well. And that's why I think it's coming worse. Not just to myself, but because you see it ha happening to other commercial drivers and other road users. Not just commercial drivers it happens to. It happens to Mrs. Joe Bloggs going out to do a daily shop. You see it happen now and again. And sometimes you can say, oh, there's sort of grounds that road rage, but at the same time to stop a car and, you know, to have a full-on argument in the street, on the road, it's not safe, is it? And to have, you know, what you achieve, it, you know, it's happened. Yes, you might tell the person you messed up, but there's a lot better ways of doing that. And, you know, I know, yes, people blow steam off different ways, but causing an accident is not worth it. Worth it, shall I say. Yeah, so I think I've uh, quite exhausted that a wee bit, the subject. But please comment down below if you've witnessed road rage before, what it may have been, or you know what you think, what, what's your solutions dealing with it. You know, my main key advice is remain calm, don't fall to the level. Try not to engage as best as possible. I know, yes, with the car that came down beside me, I engaged a little bit. 
That's only because I felt it was safe to do so. And I was just trying to tell him, look, mate, can you just reverse up to that point over there and everything will be fine. He wasn't having it initially. I think he was just on this high horse, you know. Uh, that's what a lot of road rage falls down to, just people being on the high horse, just thinking, you know, 100% no way. Or, you know, in their own little well, not the number one. You know, everybody else must get out of the way and, you know. <laughs> and I said, road rage can happen for quite a few different factors on the way from road people being offended to all sorts. You know, to relatively petty stuff, you know. Oh, you looked the direction. <laughs> I've heard of that. He looked at somebody wrong and <laughs> caused the major incident. It's getting silly. And it could potentially get very dangerous very fast. And the fact is, with the van that swore at me, you know, I didn't know. They could be just trying to wind me up, which isn't a good idea. You know, to wind up a heavy goods driver, you know. We've got a lot more on our plate to deal with during the day. That's the last thing that we need to be round up unnecessarily. You know, to be stressed out or wondering why, why, what? I know it's silly, and <laughs> to be honest, I've been laughing about it more than anything. But otherwise, from that, it's not worth it. You know, at the end, we've got a hard job. We've got to make sure we don't, you know, especially this time of year when it gets dark early. You know, we've got a lot on our plates. A lot, of, you know, safety is our number one priority. You know. Driving sensibly, safely, you know, and being efficient. So yeah, as I said, please comment down below if, what you think, you know. And do you agree with me, as do you think it has got worse? Do you think there's more road wage that's going on, you know? As I said, what, what's, do you have any tips on what you'd recommend? I'd say, you know, the other thing I'd probably personally also recommend is just let it roll off your shoulder. Have thicker skin, be the bigger man or bigger person. You know, don't fall to their level. You know, that's the key thing, don't fall to their level. You know, you're the driver, you know. If you're commercial, if you're private, you know, if I'm on my day off, you know. Don't let it get to you. Don't let them, because that's partly one of their goals is to wind you up. And you could de degree that that van driver did succeed in winding me up. Um, yes, in a way. But at the same time, it, as a professional driver, I've got to think, what's the reason? Especially certainly with the look of pure hatred. And yeah, when somebody's got a pure hatred look towards you, normally it's for a reason. Not many people would go around deliberately putting a pure hatred look on against somebody. It's very rare for that even to happen. I'm trying to call uh, sometimes that I've had that happen to me without reason or due course. Who knows? But I did report it to my company because I was a bit. That's a situation I did. Just in case there had been something happened in the air or there's been reports. I did say to the boss, it's a relative minor, and he said, yeah, oh, I'll have a word with our big boss, because he works in the area, just in case there's been something happen, or, you know, they've had a run-in. Who knows? I said that, you know, it's water off my back. It hasn't really, you know, got to me too much, except for, you know, I was more curious why than anything. As I said, I, well, I know I've repeated myself a bit in this video, but uh, it's just probably more to emphasise the point. I'm a bit perplexed about it, and uh, worth, I think it's a subject that needs to be talked about more. Because, it, it, you know, road rage is quite serious, you know, it, even in its minor forms, you know, consequences from it can, you know, from winding somebody up to, you know, physically harming, you know, and so forth, one extreme to the other. 
and you know it. So I'm looking around, <laughs> stuff going on in the background. Um, yeah. So as I said, please comment down below. Please like, and uh, those who have subscribed recently, thank you very much. It it amazes me, you know, that somebody wants to follow me. <laughs> you know, and hopefully you enjoy the content. My main aim is to improve the quality with this new camera I've got. Let's hopefully improve the video quality most certainly. Hopefully. <laughs> and probably the audio to a degree. Except for I think my external mic is a bit 50-50. Mm, so that's why I'm not that confident that my uh, other video I've done today will come out properly. We'll see on that one. I hope it has. But I am considering getting myself a proper white stick mic with thing and I'll mount it on the dash pointing towards me so I can chat, drive without having to because this is my current mic here it's one of these which is quite good, yeah, they're good other YouTubers use them I think one of the issues that I've had is that Sometimes the cable somehow has got knocked, so it's not, it's just basically recording static between the connections. Or, no, gobbledygook. Or it's a bit faint. If it's faint, there's a possibility I can do something about it. I could probably raise the volume up a wee bit and play around that way. But I want to make it as easy as possible so I don't have to fiddle around too much with the audio levels and and all that. Tell me what you think yeah, about the audio. What, what, do you have any recommendations? I know the camera has a reasonably good mic in it. That's why at the moment you're on the video camera's mic. Which hopefully is, because I think I've, I've done it before like this. When they gave the channel update video. As I discussed earlier. Hopefully it had come out anyway. That next week I will should be. Um, ordering hopefully by. Today's Friday 16th. Next Friday hopefully I'll be able to order. My bits and bobs. For my new editing computer. To build. So not. This weekend, from which is Tuesday and Wednesday, the following weekend I can build it. And hopefully then produce the first videos on it. This video, I probably will do it on my iMac, probably. When I get home this Tuesday and Wednesday. Along with the other video. But hopefully that other one comes out. I've said this just in case you didn't hear the other one. Or I didn't release the other video. I've noticed I have uh, one new new subscriber. Well, <laughs> sorry. You know, thank you very much yet again. You know, it is appreciated. I'll do more road videos. Because that's what the other one was. If not, if the audio on the other one hasn't come out, I might just do what I've done with the Bird Lip Hill one. And just play some music over it. And release it out. Even though the bird lip one was more of an experiment video of laying in music. It wasn't a perfect video. I've, I've looked back and I should have probably put some animations into it. Like reading, explaining what it was. Because I, I might still release it with the audio. But I found the audio was on the mic again. And it... I don't know what happened. It was very faint. And I, I need to play around with turning the noise up but the background noise would be quite extreme so I'll have a look and see what I can do with that video as I did have got a long spiel that time chatting out and hopefully enjoy me chatting and driving because I quite enjoy doing that the other thing I need to do a bit more of I think I have done it on a video I'm not too sure is to work on putting just bit of spiel of chatting right now then into a drive and 
a lot of it's down to me knowing what I want to chat about and keeping it short enough so I can do that, have a drive sequence with a bit of music, then back into some more chatting, you know, rinse and repeat. Yes, I could do a long video, which might be my first attempt on it, if I do that. But so that's more content for the future to happen. You know, a second camera, definitely. I know this bit's now turning into a video of an uh, update of what's going on again. But I like to give my concurrent view of what my plans are, what's happening. I have a lot more ideas what to do with the channel. Some of it relies on 50-50 on the permission side. I'll probably have a word with Ross tomorrow, but I really would like to do it face to face. Because it, you know, it's kind of awkward to go and ask your boss. Is it alright if I can vlog? Because either they know what it is, or, like last time, they have no idea. And you sort of have to explain it to them then. You know, it's not that hard to explain what vlogging is, but, you know, if somebody's not quite up there, or, you know, doesn't really watch YouTube or stuff like that. You know, there's still people out there. And no disrespect, you know, it's understandable. I don't see him saying no, but it, as I say, it's always polite to ask. So I hope you enjoyed this video yet again. As I know, I'll keep going, like saying I'm finishing a lot. So I suddenly realise I might as well update you with this. Will I'm at it? Since we're having a one-on-one, -on -one, as I would call it. And hopefully you've enjoyed the content I've produced. I know something's a bit shaky. There is always room for improvement and confidence in it. You know, I'm still getting started. I think I'm a little bit more confident as a, than I used to be. You know, watching, I might have to redo my channel intro video, I think. Looking back to it, because uh, I'm a bit rigid. <laughs> I know I might be a bit rigid at the moment, to be honest, but who knows? I'm trying to be more myself, because I think that's probably the key important thing to the view, is be more myself, and I've discussed this with another YouTuber in comments, saying, look, what do you recommend and look at YouTubing, you know. So, number one piece of advice would be, just be yourself. And that's what I'm trying to be, is be me. But it's more putting me into this, into the camera, and realising I'm not just chatting to the camera, I'm chatting to all of you. Which, it sounds mental, but it seems mental. <laughs> it's just a bit bizarre, you know, having to contextualise it in, even though I watch YouTube all the time, you know, I think, oh, it must be easy. <laughs> but when you put the camera in front of you, it changes quite quick. And you, before, when you start off, you sort of drawn out a rough idea of what you're going to talk about, what you're going to do. And like myself, I like to go off on the tangent about stuff. <laughs> a little bit. And go, right, let's talk about it until I realise, oh, I need to rewind it back and we're talking about this. <laughs> hopefully I'm not too bad. I do hopefully do realise what I have and backtrack a wee bit. But nevertheless, I. So I'm just looking at my entertainment centre. It should not be playing any music. It's, it's muted down anyway, so it's not a drama. So yeah. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Please comment down below. Please like and please subscribe. I've also started a Facebook account but I have not edited it yet I haven't added it in yet so that's to come very shortly I will probably sort that out this weekend and I'll put that on the channel this weekend the other thing I need to work on is some channel art as well you know because it's a bit mm, just from a truck in because I want to do this truck ideally so I'm in do an outside one and maybe some like trucking Steve-o 
been towed behind it or something crazy. I'll see what I can do. I think it'll be a bit amateuristic to start off with. But I hope it improves over time. Either somebody else doing it for me or... I'll, I'll give it a good old shot 